one of the most common questions that I get when I'm doing incident response or threat hunting, or more specifically teaching people how to do threat hunting or incident response is how would you know to go look at that specific machine? Or how would you know to take a memory dump or look at that machine's individual traffic out of the 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 devices that are on the network? Well, the answer to that is because of a group that we talk about called the SOC or the Security Operations Center. And, you know, I say this all the time. I think in our industry, the SOC and the SOC team are the most underrated, underappreciated, under-discussed groups in all of cybersecurity because it's because of that team that we're able to see the things that we need to see or focus on the things that we need to focus on. But as a part of that and what makes a SOC team work and what makes incident response and threat hunting and all that works is having a good SIM solution. I'm going to show you how using a SIM, one of my favorites, Exabeam, how this ties together. And we'll go from the very beginning of where someone in the SOC saw through the SIM a problem, and then we'll look at what the hunting and the incident response will look like. Let's jump right into it. Now, what we said is the fact that what you normally see is the SOC is who's responsible for letting us know where to look for a specific piece of malware and when something's wrong. What you see here is kind of my way to illustrate this. You can see the SOC up here at the top. These are the, the unsung heroes, the people that are in there daily grinding it out, looking for these variations and anomalies. And then they're usually plugged into what we call a SIM or a security information and event management system. And one of my favorites, as I said in the previous uh, part of this video, is Exabeam. Now, what you can see is incident response, threat hunting, you know, incident detection or intrusion detection, risk management, all of this ties into these SIM solutions and utilizes the data. Let's look at what happens in a scenario. And we're going to go quickly from beginning to end where something in the SIM showed us that something wasn't quite right. And then we'll dig into the weeds so you can see how we get into those weeds. Kind of counter to what my normal videos are, whereas we pick up right in the weeds. Let's look at that. So I've logged into my Xbeam SIM console here. And, you know, this is one of the best dashboards, most intuitive dashboards uh, of the SIM market. You know, this is one of my favorites. So as you can see here, we can see all kinds of things. We can see notable users. And by notable, we mean users that there's been some activity that makes us notice them. You know, there's something about this user's activity that makes us kind of put them in this category. There's notable assets. This would be specific servers or desktops or things like that that may be doing some behavior that kind of makes us notice those devices as well. And you can see we have all different kinds of categories here that we look at in our SIM to see what's going on. Now, in this particular instance, we're going to look at Barbara Salazar here. So if we go look at her alert and see why she's in the notable people's list here, we can see if we click on this incident here. Now, I want you to notice this is classified as a medium. It's not a critical, not a high uh, categorization. But if we go look at her and look at what this report is, what we see, and this is November 22nd, so this is like just, you know, yesterday, what we can see is Ms. Salazar here has been VPNing in from the Ukraine. And the reason she got into this group of notable is because she's never VPN from the Ukraine before, right? So that may not be anything, but it could be everything. So that's how we got to focus on Ms. Salazar. So now we're going to go and look at our VPN concentrator or our VPN drop box or jump box. So, you know, a lot of these organizations have these really old boxes or really old infrastructures where when you VPN in, you jump off into that box. And then from that box, you can move horizontally inside the environment. So now let's jump over to that based on what we saw in this great dashboard here uh, to get us to that point to where we knew that Barbara Salazar was having an issue or there could have been an issue. And this could be the impetus for where we might start something like a cyber threat hunt based on just this medium thing here. We don't know that there's anything wrong, but the dashboard can quickly get us to the point. Remember, we started here. It can quickly get us to the point to where we can kind of see that, okay, there's VPN from a geolocation that she's never done before. Uh, that We don't have any evidence of malware, anything like that. It's a medium priority thing. But you know what? Let's let's create a threat hunting hypothesis and assume that maybe there is an issue because there's a VPN from the Ukraine. This gives us all that. So let's go now and look and see what we would see on 
her VPN session or the previous sessions that she's generated. So now as we get to the VPN junction point, you can see the VPN profiles here. And if we go look at those, we look in her profile and we don't see anything weird there, but we're forming an hypothesis here. And because we understand that the whole purpose of these advanced persistent threats is they don't want you to see evidence of anything going on. So just out of curiosity here, we're just gonna run, I'm gonna run a task list and get a list of running processes. And I'm also gonna run, these are just built-in Windows commands. I'm gonna do netstat and look at current connections. And I'm gonna write that to the same file, all right? Now this is a common little triage that I'll do when I think something's wrong. And I'm gonna copy this file somewhere that I can get to it remotely, all right? So we don't know that anything's wrong, but we just did a little triage. We copied that file over, uh, took a, a list of, you know, what was running and just to show you what that file looks like. It's just a little file looks like that, shows us running processes and connections. Now notice here's a list of all the running processes and they're all legitimate when this process is nothing looks out of whack there. Here's, um, you know, connections. There's no weird connections. There's actually no connections, just listening ports. They all look legit. So nothing to see there uh, on this jump box. Now, because we saw, got that hint from Barbara Salazar's VPN from the Ukraine, and we knew it came in this box. We're gonna just, as a precautionary measure, out of an abundance of caution, we're gonna take a memory dump anyway of this machine. And we always talk about the order of volatility and why um, that's such an important thing. So we're gonna write, just, just write right onto the C drive here. And we're just gonna write a memory dump out. And I'm using this old machine because it's got a really, really tiny amount of memory. So this, this demo can go quicker uh, with me just taking like a 256 meg memory dump but you get the point. You don't have to sit here and watch me, uh, you know, wait for a memory dump from a 32 gig memory machine to take 45 minutes for you to get the point of what's going on here. So I'm going to take that memory dump now and we're going to put it onto a server. All right, it's transferred. So now we're going to go to our investigative machine. We're going to bring that memory dump over. And then with that dump, we're going to just do a comparative analysis here. So remember, we wrote out this file. So we wrote out this hacked file, right? That showed us everything that's going on on the machine. And we can see there's our running processes. And then we can see run under that our connections. Now, I want you to pay attention to the fact that there's a listening session on port 80 and port 110, but nothing on port 100. And here's again, the running processes. Now, taking that memory dump, that we just bought over. So let's look at that. I'm gonna use a tool called Volatility. This is just a memory dump tool. And we're gonna point at that barb.raw file here. All right, and just, I'm not trying to teach you volatility here, so I'm not gonna go into all the things that I'm doing with the commands here. And we're gonna get a list of running processes. So that's gonna be the first comparative analysis we're gonna do. So we're gonna look at the processes that are currently running per the memory dump and compare that to what we see when we run task list or task manager from the victim itself, which is what we see over here. And right away, we see two processes right there that we don't see running on the other side over here. So the machine itself is lying to us and telling us that, you know, this is all the processes we have and there's no weird connections. But also if we look at connections, we'll see that there's a connection on port 100 that doesn't show up over here, right? When we looked at the listening ports from the machine itself, it says, look, we don't have any connections and this is what's all it's listening. So clearly there is something wrong. You know, what it ends up being is that weird process is actually a rootkit that you saw there. So that's actually a rootkit that's running. And if we extract that rootkit, we would find that it's something very, very bad. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. So let's get a, get the process name for that rootkit. And it's, and it's PID. All right, so that rootkit, that thing that we think is a rootkit, which is right here, 
All right, that's running as a PID of 3148. So what I'm gonna do is make a directory named Barb, and I'm going to extract that rootkit out to that directory. And we'll use something called proc dump to do that from volatility. We're gonna dump it right to uh, Barb. And that process is 3148. Oh, we forgot to do our dash D here. My bad. All right. So it dumped it out. I'm just going to go right out to now. Now, in practice, we don't use virus total for real work because, you know, there could in this rootkit, there could be, you know, customer information exposed or something like that. So but just for this demo, I'm going to show you that that, that rootkit is really bad. It is something bad and it doesn't show up on any scans or anything like that that you do. So we had to actually do the memory dump to get to this. And then there's the binary. So we go ahead and upload it to VirusTotal and let VirusTotal tell us what it thinks. And of course it comes back and says backdoor, backdoor, rootkit, 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 bad, bad, bad. So the point of this is generally we start in the weeds here, but we knew to do a memory dump. We knew to look for disparities or differences based on what the memory said versus what the machine said itself. All because in the beginning, when we looked at our sim, we knew that something was up with Barbara Lazar's VPN sessions because why? She was doing VPN sessions from somewhere she'd never done them before, in this case, the Ukraine. And that is what led us to go take that memory dump. So for all of you that always ask me, well, how would you know to go to that machine in the first place? Sim, Sim Solutions specifically ones that are really, really good and have great dashboards that are intuitive like Exabeam is what makes us able to do that. And again, can't take my hats off enough to uh, the SOC teams that actually manage these things and put these dashboards together and make it easier for us to shine and look like the heroes in this industry. So that's what I wanted you to take a look at. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this little educational session.